All right. I want to, I got to do this because I forgot about doing it last time. We got to talk about Georgia championship wrestling and, uh, and 1977. Uh, this was a great year for wrestling in Georgia. It started really in 1976. Those, those 1976, 1977 started a, a four or five year run that uh, Georgia championship wrestling uh, did really. That was incredible. And uh, so I want to, uh, I want to start here. Here is the card, September 9th, 1977, Atlanta, Georgia, at the Atlanta Municipal Auditorium. It was a tournament for the Georgia Tag Team Championship. Richard Blood and Stephen Littlebear against Dick Slater and Sergeant Jacques Goulet. And uh, Richard Blood and Stephen Littlebear won that match. Tommy Rich and Tony Atlas against Don Carnudo and Dino Bravo. Tommy Rich and Tony Atlas won that one. Ole and Gene Anderson against Dusty Rhodes and Thunderbolt Patterson. Ole and Gene Anderson won that match. Pack Song and the Executioner, which was Sergeant Slaughter, goes against Randy Savage, his pre-macho days, and Bill White, Pack Song and the Executioner, which were uh, uh, managed by Rock Hunter. Uh, then we had Tommy Rich and Tony Atlas beat Richard Blood and, and uh, Stephen Little Bear. Pack Song and Executioner beat it, uh, beat the Andersons to advance in that. Uh, I, I would like to have seen that. I bet that was a very good. I don't think I was there that night, but uh, I would. There was a difference. It. it was Rock Hunter. Rock Hunter. I'm pretty sure. Rock he did Hunter. Some, yeah. Is uh, some some bad things. I want to show a picture right there. Tommy Rich and Tony Atlas. Uh, this would have been a little bit uh, at the time when they were uh, teaming with each other, uh, but they won. The Georgia Tag Team Titles by by beating Pack Song and the Executioner uh, that night. And here is a picture of Richard Blood. Richard Blood uh, would, would eventually become Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And uh, so here's here's the next year. <clears throat> Man, all at once I had a I had a high right there. September sixteenth, nineteen seventy seven, Atlanta, Georgia, the Atlanta Municipal Auditorium. Richard Blood. Uh, went against Ken Dillinger, Sergeant Jacques Goulet against Stephen Little Bear, uh, Jack Briscoe, and you see him here with Jerry Briscoe, uh, went against the French Angel, Georgia heavyweight title match, Dino Bravo went against Dick Slater, and the Georgia tag team champions, Tommy Rich and Tony Atlas uh, went against uh, Pac Song and the Executioner. Uh, for the uh, Georgia Tag Team Championships. I love those belts right there. Yeah, I love those yep. belts. I'm yep. just looking at those belts right there. And uh, uh, you're talking about a team that was really over. Now the World Tag Team title was on the line. Dick Slater. And it would be Dusty Rose against Ole and Gene Anderson. Now, it was not supposed to be Dick Slater. It was supposed to be Bill Watts. Cowboy Bill Watts and Dusty Rhodes against Ole and Gene Anderson. What had happened was Dusty Rhodes came out and told everybody that Bill Watts wasn't going to be there. Now, remember, Dick Slater was a very, I mean, hated person during this time. Probably one of the most hated wrestlers in Georgia wrestling history. Would you agree, Rodney? Yeah, yeah, we're definitely. So, Especially at that time. So here's the scenario. Dusty Rhodes gets on the mic and tells him, he says, Bill Watts not going to be there, so he's needing a partner. So so he tells him, oh, I need a partner. So here comes Richard Blood. Here comes Tommy Rich. Here comes Tony Atlas. They all come out and they get in the ring. And he says, I need somebody that will fight him. And he tells him, he tells Tommy Rich and Tony Atlas, he says, listen, y'all just had a – Tremendous match. There's no way we're going against Ole and Gene Anderson. There's no way I can have you as a partner. He looks down the aisle way and he sees somebody standing in the aisle. And it's Dick Slater. And he says, I'll pick you, Dick Slater. So he goes, Dick Slater gets in there. You know, if, if anybody knows Dick Slater, he starts out real slow. He finally gets into his corner. He stands at that, he stands, the match is going. And Ole and Gene, by this time, they're feeling good. They got they got Dick Slater on the other side. They beat, they beat Dusty Rose down. He bleeds. He finally gets over there, gets that big tag to Slater. He just stands there for a moment, just looks. 
gets in the ring and starts kicking Ole Anderson and Gene Anderson's tail all over that place. They win the World Tag Team titles. But because Dick Slater wasn't the guy that was on the thing, wasn't on the contract, they went on television, took the titles away, and then, so they have a return back. Now, this is the reason they did all this. People will look. This is this is this is what we're talking about wrestling wise. They come back. The Omni is going to be run on September twenty third, nineteen seventy seven. Randy Savage and Bill White against Richard Blood and Don Sereno. Tommy Rich against Buddy Roberts. Way before he's the fabulous free bird. Uh, it may it may even be before he was the Hollywood Blonde. Dino Bravo and Stephen Littlebear against Sergeant Jacule and the French Angel. The Executioner against Tony Marino. Dick Murdoch against Big Bill Drummo. Thunderbolt Patterson against Grizzly Smith. Hey. Um, United States Heavyweight Championship. Ric Flair. Nature Boy Ric Flair, the champion against Tony Atlas. Pac Song against Jack Briscoe. And the main event, World Tag Team title return. Dick Slater and Dusty Rhodes against Ole and Gene Anderson. And guess what? I think the Omni sold out crowd. I don't know. I th I th it says sold out, so I don't know. What did the Omni hold? 17,680, something like that. 17,000 people uh, paid to see Dusty Rhodes and Dick Slater team up once again to go against Ole. And it was a shock because right in the middle of this, see, Slater and two was having it, getting into it hot and heavy over the Georgia Championship. Was doing the I'm the Turkey Mask and all the other towns, and so yeah, it was right. So it was a it was a surprise. It wasn't just one of those telegraph things. No, it was a surprise. Yeah, you didn't see it coming. It wasn't something that uh, that everybody saw coming. Uh, before we leave, let's make sure we get uh, everybody in here. Steve Burton was Tommy Rich as popular as he was in Georgia. Was Tommy Rich? And uh, so I guess you talk about in that continental. Uh, well, you know, any other place that Tommy went to, uh, he was over, but I think Georgia was the apex for him. Right. I mean, he was, you know, I, I never saw uh, people, I mean, it was like electricity going through the air when Tommy would walk out with no music and, and, and the place would explode. Yeah, I, I don't think you even could have had music. I don't think you could have heard it for all the people screaming and carrying out. I think you're right. Tommy Rich was really, and I don't think he ever got as over as he was in Georgia. Now he, when he went to Ohio, you talk about somebody over, he was over in Ohio, West Virginia. I mean, that, that, that they had to get extra police to get him in and out of places. That's how he was. He, he, he was amazing. He, he was simply amazing. Was Pat and two before mid south? You know, I, I will look at that and next uh, and next Monday. I'll see if exactly when that was. If it was before or after it, uh, after that, uh, I'm I'm thinking it was. I'm thinking I'll, it was. I'll swing by the old folks' home and ask for Pat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, Pat! I did not say that. Okay, I did not. Even though you won't come on and do our show, I still love you. So, I, you know, I. <laughs> Uh, right, uh, Gregory Pill, Roger, you can to Randy. No, no, Randy no, he, he was a great guy and, and with the videos and stuff. He I mean, he really created those music video wrestling vid, mini music videos in Memphis, and he was very important with getting a lot of the wrestlers over by using that uh, that uh, tool. Uh, Todd said, great angle. I remember it well. Slater was looking through the curtain. Dusty Joe Slater, yes. Good stuff back then. Great, great story. And then for whatever reason, Ole disappears. Remember, Ole disappears. And Slater was there, and he's trying to find Ole, and he got into it with Gene and come across that table. Remember, they had the, the table with uh, Gordon Soley, and he come across the table and picked up uh, Gene Anderson, slammed him behind the table. It was awesome. <laughs> Good stuff back then. That's, what, that's the kind of wrestling we're seeing. If we were producing wrestling, and one of these days down the road – we will be producing old school wrestling, and that's the kind of wrestling that we're looking. It's it's it because it was really character driven, basically. You know, it, it had great matches, but it was a character driven show. It was more about Dusty Rhodes going against Ole Anderson. It wasn't about it the was, match. It was, it was about those, yeah, it was that 
those rivalries that that created, whether it been Ole and Gene against Wrestling One and Two, or Thunderbolt Patterson and Ole Anderson, Ole Anderson, Dusty Rhodes, or Dick Slater in Wrestling Two, Superstar in Wrestling Two, Tommy Rich, Buzz Sawyer, it was those great rivalries that made it. Chad Weeks said Tommy was a pretty good hill, also. Yeah, he was because uh, you know in in Memphis he drew a lot of money. He drew a lot of money as a hill with the uh, Austin Idol. So. Uh, oh, that was that was probably one of the biggest heat angles I ever saw. <laughs> and that really was the only answer for Tommy in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, as long as you're, as long as Lawler's there, you're never going to be in the top position. There you go. So there you, there you goes. Who was the better hill, Jack Lear or Tommy Rich? Well, there's a tie there. Now Jack was magnificent. <laughs> he could get so much heat. Uh, it's incredible amount of heat. Uh, Jack knew. Jack I, knew. I, I was just, I was a natural heel. Tommy was a natural baby face. Now he could work heel. He was great at heel, but I was just a natural heel. You know, I, I, I like making people mad. <laughs> <laughs> they should hear the stuff we say off air. <laughs> uh, David Lawson says Georgia championship wrestling came to Etowah, Tennessee. I remember saying Piper was late to the show that caused him to be fired by Ole. Uh, he, he's actually fired by Jim Barnett. Jim Barnett's the one that fired him. Uh, what had happened was is uh, Buzz Sawyer and, uh, and Brett Armstrong had to wrestle like 45 minutes and we kept on. They, they were at home when that when they were a telephone call made. They were at home, and Dad told Tommy Rich, "You get Roddy Piper, and you get him here." That these people are away. Okay, we're on the way. Well, they did finally make it, but Roddy Piper was making. I'll, I'll just throw it. He's making three thousand dollars a week. Okay, and this is in the nineteen eighties. The man should have been there and had a walk in and see without having to be told that he needed to be there. And Jim Barnett, the next morning, says he's fired. Now, why Tommy Rich wasn't fired, I don't know. That's that's a question nobody really knows because he should have been fired too. Uh, because and, and really, Brad and Buzz should have been given, given Roddy Piper's money for the week because they really went out there and worked really, Save really show. Save the show. Save the show. Yeah. Yeah, they and really. They got out there and wrestled for ten minutes. After yeah, all it, was, it was horrible. It was horrible. It was a horrible situation, and uh, you know, so it's just uh, where did where did they wrestle on at a wall? I believe it was at the elementary school there, wasn't it? it seemed like it was elementary school. or was a recreation center. Maybe a little recreation center. Maybe in a little community building there. I we were sitting I, on a stage. It was in a, on a stage. I remember no no bleachers in there. I think it was all flat. Johnny uh, Witt was the uh, local wrestling promoter. Yeah, uh, he he promoted that show. So uh, so I don't. I can't remember. I can't remember the name. I'll look that up. There there is somewhere that I can look that up and see. Uh, uh, where they went. Uh, Jeffrey Archer said, Evening, fellas. Tommy Rich, especially when that skinny fan climbed the cage and all around Tommy told him to come in. He did. <laughs> uh, what was the travel like in Continental? That was a fairly easy territory. Yeah. You know, it was a you, Monday nights was uh, Birmingham, Alabama, every Monday night. Tuesday was either Columbus, Mississippi. Or uh, Florence, Alabama, or some spot show. Wednesday, you were off most of the time. Uh, Thursday was always a spot show uh, somewhere. Friday was uh, maybe Panama City or, or a spot show rally, except when Knoxville Mobile, started running. Mobile was on Fridays for a while. Friday was for a while. They were, it was a Mobile. When Knoxville started running, that got a little harder because sometimes yeah. you go from Knoxville to Dothan, Alabama. And that, yeah. was long, that was a long trip. And uh, I, but, I remember Christmas, one Christmas, and I think Thanksgiving both ran in the afternoon, ran in Knoxville, and then that, that night came back to Chatter, uh, back to Birmingham or vice versa. Uh, 